OK. So this is joint work with Sanjam Gurg, Vipul Goyal, and Amit Sahai. So since this work is about concurrently secure computation, let's start by reviewing the definition of uh, secure computation. So the basic idea is as follows. Uh, we have uh, two parties holding private inputs, x and y, and they want to jointly compute some function over their inputs. So they can you know, run a protocol by and uh, jointly compute this function. And uh, the security guarantee is that even if one of these parties is corrupted, then uh, you know, it does not learn anything more than the function output. And so what this means is essentially the parties could have simply sent uh, their inputs uh, to a trusted oracle who computes the function output and then sends it back to the parties. Okay? So you know, uh, secure computation we know is a great, uh, you know, a great primitive in cryptography and has found various applications. Uh, one important point that will be crucial for this talk is that uh, the original definition of secure computation only guarantees security uh, when we run the protocol in isolation. Uh, that is, it only guarantees standalone security of protocols. Okay? In reality, things are different. Uh, you know, today we run protocols uh, on uh, network environments, such as the internet. And uh, you know, in, these, in, in, in such a scenario, uh, various parties across uh, you know, different protocol executions may be corrupted. And they may be, they may be able to mount, uh, mount coordinated attacks on the honest parties. So you know, really what we want is security under concurrent composition. So essentially what we want is that uh, when we run protocols, even concurrently with other protocols, uh, still you know, they, they remain secure. To be more concrete, uh, when we talk about uh, security of multiple executions of the same protocol, then we say you know, security under concurrent self-composition. On the other hand, when we talk about security of uh, arbitrary protocols being executed concurrently, uh, then we call it concurrent general composition. And the UC framework of Kennedy is a, you know, a specific formulation for capturing security under uh, concurrent general composition. So you know, the key point is actually standalone security does not imply security under concurrent composition. OK, so, so let's start by you know, reviewing some of the prior work in the area of uh, concurrent uh, security, because that is the focus of this talk. So unfortunately, when it comes to designing you know, concurrently secure protocols, things are not really that great. But if we are actually willing to make some global trust assumptions, for example, you know, like uh, trusting a party to issue uh, an honestly chosen common reference string, then we can actually get uh, you know, general positive results. And there is a long line of work dealing with this. However, do we really want to trust you know, parties? In, indeed, a, a driving goal in cryptography is to eliminate the need of trusting other parties. And you know, therefore, ideally, we would like to design protocols uh, you know, in the plain model without, uh, without trusting other parties. But when it comes to designing protocols in the plain model, you know, by and far, most of the results in this area have been negative. Indeed, starting with the impossibility of uh, you know, achieving UC security, there has been a long line of impossibility results, ruling out general composition, uh, you know, and even security under weaker notions of concurrent self-composition in various settings, such as adaptive inputs, and then you know, using fixed inputs, so on and so forth. So you know, things might look really, really you know, pretty hopeless and you know, uh, really bleak, but let me try to convince you that actually you know, things are not as bad as, as it may seem. So in fact, we can achieve uh, relaxed notions of security uh, in the plane model, uh, which are quite meaningful in various application scenarios. Uh, so one such popular notion uh, that we'll be interested in this work is uh, the notion of super polynomial time simulation. Uh, and uh, you know, the name kind of already gives away what it means, but I'll, I'll discuss this notion in a bit more detail briefly. Another notion that has been studied is that of input indistinguishable computation, where, you know, very crudely speaking, you can think of it as an analog to witness indistinguishability in the, in the context of secure computation. And in this work, you know, we'll, we'll be building new techniques uh, for obtaining interesting results under both of these frameworks. Uh, but for concreteness and you know, for, for simplicity in this talk, I'll only focus on uh, security under super polynomial time simulation. So let's try to understand what is uh, security under uh, super polynomial time simulation. The motivation uh, is as follows. You know, for, for various uh, real world applications, for example, voting, uh, privacy preserving, data mining, et cetera, uh, the ideal world security for these applications is actually statistical or even information theoretic. So in these cases, uh, the running time of the simulator actually does not matter. So then the idea is that Unlike the standard uh, you know, definition of secure computation, where the simulator must run in polynomial time, 
In the case of SPS security, the simulator is actually allowed to run in super polynomial time. So the effective security guarantee that we get is that any real world attack can be translated to the ideal world, but in super polynomial time. So, you know, of course, ideally, we would like to get uh, polynomial time security, but as I just mentioned earlier, in general, this is impossible. Okay, so, you know, to better motivate the, the, the exact question that we are interested in this work, let me try to review some of the prior work in this area. So, uh, perhaps uh, unsurprisingly, the initial work in this area uh, relied on, uh, you know, some uh, assumptions, security assumptions, against super polynomial time adversaries in order to, to, to make the constructions. But uh, recently, you know, in a, uh, in a very, very beautiful work, uh, Kennedy Lin Pass showed that surprisingly, actually, such assumptions are not necessary. And in fact, we can use only standard uh, polynomial time assumptions uh, to, to construct protocols achieving security with respect to super polynomial simulation. The main drawback, however, of the result is that it requires a large polynomial number of rounds. And if we look closely, to some extent, uh, large round complexity seems to be somewhat inherent to the approach. So the, the question that we ask in this work is if we can construct constant non-protocols that achieve uh, uh, SPS security uh, by relying on only standard polynomial time assumptions. And we, of course, answer this question in the affirmative. So let me summarize our results. Uh, our main contribution is a new black box simulation technique uh, that allows us to get constant round uh, SPS secure protocols, in fact, secure in the UC framework. Uh, and by we only rely on standard polynomial time assumptions. And we also give a new simulation-based uh, definition of input indistinguishability uh, that is cleaner than the original definition of Michali, Pass, and Rosen, and also captures some more cases in particular, allows us to capture randomized functionalities, which was not the case earlier. And as another application of our black box simulation technique, uh, we are actually able to show that our uh, protocol, the SPS secure protocol, is also secure with respect to our new definition of input indistinguishability. Okay, so uh, in this talk, I will, I will only focus on the black box simulation technique. So let's try, you know, let's start by trying to understand why did the initial works, uh, you know, require stand, you know, some uh, assumptions with respect to super polynomial time, sim uh, with respect uh, super polynomial time security assumptions, right? Why did they require that? So let's look at, you know, kind of a protocol template that these works used. Uh, so the idea is that at some point during the protocol, uh, there will be a phase, a so-called trapdoor phase, where the simulator can actually run in super polynomial time to get a trapdoor. And then once he has this trapdoor, he can actually simulate the remainder, the remainder of the protocol in, you know, in a straight line manner without any complications. So how do we prove security? Well, let's try to construct hybrid arguments. So the idea is that in the beginning, you know, we'll start by running in super polynomial time and get this trapdoor. And then now once we have this trapdoor, you know, we can construct, you know, we can go on and make, make various changes in the protocol until we finally arrive at the simulator, okay? But note that as soon as we start running in super polynomial time in the initial hybrid, in the later hybrids, we cannot rely on uh, polynomial time assumptions anymore because these hybrids are inefficient, right? They are already running in super polynomial time, so we can trivially break uh, polynomial time assumptions and we don't get any contradiction. So indeed, this is why uh, the prior works uh, require super polynomial time assumptions uh, to construct their protocols. So let me now describe a basic high-level approach that we can use to actually you know, move from using super polynomial time assumptions to using only standard polynomial time assumptions. So the idea is as follows. You know, instead of constructing the hybrid arguments uh, in this manner, what we'll do is we'll take this initial step where we ran in super polynomial time and move it essentially to the bottom. You know, what we are saying, what we are doing is now we will run in super polynomial time only at the very end of the hybrid experiment, and this last step will be our simulator. Okay? So now everything else before this would be polynomial time. But it, it seems a little bizarre because in order to, you know, uh, actually execute these previous set of hybrids, we would need the trapdoor, right? So how do we get the trapdoor? So we turn to our good friend, rewinding, okay? So now what we'll do is, in the beginning, we will do rewinding to actually get this trapdoor, and this rewinding will be done in polynomial time. Now once we have this trapdoor, we can execute these set of hybrids in the same manner as before, but the crucial difference is that now all these hybrids will be in polynomial time, okay? So actually now, in these set of hybrids, we can rely on polynomial time assumptions. 
And at the very end, in the final step only, we run in super polynomial time. And in the final step, we do not do any rewinding. We just run in super polynomial time to get the trapdoor. What the same trapdoor that we were getting earlier by rewinding. Okay. So this is the basic approach. Uh, so you know, it makes sense to question the feasibility of this approach. So. Uh, we know from experience you know, that our good friend rewinding is not really such a good friend when we, when we go to the concurrent setting. Indeed, uh, we know that uh, rewinding in concurrent setting can be quite complex. And indeed, the work of Canetil in past uses pretty sophisticated rewinding techniques to, get their, uh, to prove security of their protocol. We will also use rewinding, but uh, you know, we'll use rewinding in a in somewhat different way that will help us to actually get constant rounds, unlike the previous, uh, the previous result. But uh, you know, it makes sense to, again, stop for a second and you know, look at this, this approach. Does it even make sense? You know, if, if we are using rewinding, and if the rewinding works, you know, which is better for the proof to go through, then why do we even need the super polynomial time step at the, at the, at the very end? You know, why not just get rid of it and stop at the penultimate hybrid and, and be done, right? That, that can be the final simulator. So let me try to you know, again drill home the point that uh, the approach does make sense. And the, the main point is that we are, again, doing rewinding only in the intermediate hybrids. Okay? The final simulator, where we run super polynomial time, we do not do any rewinding. And in fact, it better not do any rewinding because we are trying to get UC security where rewinding is not allowed. Okay? So the hope is that because we do rewinding only in this intermediate set of hybrids, we can somehow leverage this, uh, this fact to, you know, to, get, uh, to get security in constant rounds, which is typically not possible in the concurrent setting. So, so at this point, let's you know, try to review some of the main challenges or you know, the vagaries of rewinding in the concurrent setting. So to be, more, to be concrete, let's think of uh, concurrent executions of a protocol uh, you know, between a simulator and the adversary. And remember that uh, in the concurrent setting, the adversary is the one who controls the scheduling of messages. So let's look at a specific scheduling. So here, blue arrows denote the outer session, and uh, the inner session is being denoted by orange. Okay? And for simplicity, I'm just thinking of uh, concurrent self-composition. Okay? It, it suffices to, uh, to drive home the, the, the challenges. So now, at some point, the simulator, the rewinding simulator, may actually try to rewind the outer session. Okay? So, so when it rewinds the outer session, the inner session may also get rewound. But furthermore, the simulator, in order to complete this rebound execution thread, he may actually need to do recursive rewinding in this inner session. For, so essentially, you know, the simulator may, may keep on have to do rewinding. And typically, reversive re recursive rewinding is very problematic and requires a large number of rounds. You know, and in fact, if we think of the, the case of black box concurrent zero knowledge, then uh, there is a lower bound of logarithmic rounds. So somehow, we need to get past this because we actually want to get constant rounds. Another related problem that comes up is that the adversary may actually start using different, uh, different inputs in, uh, you know, in different instances of a protocol. So when, you know, we are, when we are running this orange protocol on the main execution thread, he may use some input y. And when we do rewinding, he may suddenly use some different input y prime. And the simulator will have to fetch the output corresponding to both of these inputs from the, from the idle functionality. Right? So essentially, the simulator may end up needing multiple queries to the idle functionality, which is obviously not allowed in the, in the security definition. OK. So let me now describe our key insights, uh, how we are able to go, to go past these, uh, these problems. So the starting point is that, again, we are doing rewinding only for extraction purposes and not for general simulation. Okay? So if we, if we look at you know, the, uh, the set of hybrids that we discussed earlier, right? that will be our proof approach. Uh, if we look at the final two sets of hybrids, the only difference between the final rewinding-based hybrid, which is hybrid 4 here, and our final simulator, which is hybrid 5 here, is the manner in which we do extraction. In, in every other way, they are essentially the same. It's just that in hybrid 4, we do rewinding to extract some trapdoor. And in hybrid 5, we, we actually run in super polynomial time to, to do extraction. Okay? So now we only care that, the extraction, that somehow the extraction works. So of course, the SPS simulator always extracts by definition. So now we just need to make sure that somehow the rewinding-based extraction also works. And we want to do so in constant rounds. So, the key idea, in some sense, is that since we are doing rewinding only in the, only in the hybrid experiments, right, we actually have access to honest parties' inputs. And we will use these honest parties' inputs in, on the rewound execution threads. 
And in general, this is, you know, this is not good because we don't have honest parties input. But once again, since we are doing rewinding only in the hybrids, we can use these honest parties inputs. And this is perfectly legitimate because our final simulator does not rewind. So uh, since, the only, uh, since we only care about the indistinguishability of the output of these experiments, and uh, you know, we only output the main thread, it is perfectly fine to, to use the honest parties inputs when we do rewindings. And now this actually pretty much take care, takes care of uh, the problems that I mentioned earlier. Because we have honest parties inputs during the rewindings, we don't need to query the idle functionality anymore multiple times. We can just compute the function outputs on our own. And moreover, now we can simply behave honestly on the rewound execution threads. And we will not need to do any recursive rewinding as well. Uh, you know, so pretty much we can take you know, any simple three round uh, uh, extraction protocol and use that to, you know, to do the winding. And this will help us get constant rounds. So that's really the, the key kind of, uh, you know, uh, the key idea here. When we try to implement it, you know, there are some, some issues that come up. So you know, in the last few minutes, let me just try to uh, explain those issues. So what is our you know, strategy again? We want to use honest parties inputs on the rewound, you know, on the, during the rewindings. But note that at the same time, on the main execution thread, we do not want to use honest parties inputs. Right? So it's like, you know, uh, when I rewind, I use honest parties inputs. But on the main thread, I don't, rewind, uh, I don't use honest parties inputs. Right? So this may be kind of problematic, because typically, you know, a rewinding, you know, a rewinding thread shares some kind of prefix of messages with the main thread. Right? And now, if we already start cheating on the main thread and then rewind, then we may not be able to suddenly behave honestly. We may be committed to already cheating, and we will have to continue cheating. And you know, if we continue cheating, maybe we'll have to do recursive rewinding again. So let me try to explain this by an example. So let's say we have a, you know, a simple protocol where at some point the honest party commits to, let's say, 0, and then tries to prove that, you know, in the zero knowledge proof, that it actually did commit to 0. And now we are you know, trying to construct a rewinding simulator. So what happens is that maybe you know, the simulator for the purposes of simulation has to commit to one. And now, if it does rewinding, then there is a problem. Because now, the simulator will actually need to cheat in the zero knowledge proof. Right? This, I mean, he already committed to one. So uh, since he's already cheating, he cannot suddenly behave honestly in the zero knowledge proof because the statement is false. So he has to cheat. And, but in order to cheat, he may actually need to do recursive rewinding. And like I mentioned earlier, we, that is the one main thing we want to avoid, because we want to get constant rounds. So the, our solution is essentially as follows. Uh, very roughly, we, we, d we want to design a protocol uh, that allows uh, a rewinding simulator or you know, a rewinding hybrid uh, to extract a trapdoor from the adversary before it starts to cheat in any session. Okay. So in particular, if we think of a session, let's say session i that appears somewhere in the protocol, then the idea is that if, uh, if we already started cheating in session i when it appeared on the main thread of execution, then it means that we have already extracted a trapdoor. And now if we do any further rewinding, then since we already have the trapdoor, we can continue to cheat using that trapdoor in a straight line manner. That is, no recursive rewinding anymore. On the other hand, if we were behaving honestly so far in session i, then if we do rewinding in the future, then I can simply use the honest party inputs to behave honestly. And again, no recursive rewinding anymore. So that's really kind of how we design the protocol. And uh, you know, we, are, we are able to implement our strategy where you know, we, we cheat uh, on the main thread, but still somehow sometimes behave honestly on the, on the rewindings and, uh, and proof security. So the actual proof strategy is a bit more involved, as you may expect, but uh, I'll skip the details. So let me conclude with some open problems. So in this work, we actually only consider the standard, uh, you know, the original security definition of, of super polynomial time simulation. There is a, a stronger notion uh, you know, uh, called angel-based security, which, which provides better composition guarantees. And this was introduced by pa uh, Prabhakaran and Sahai. And uh, our solution does not seem to extend immediately to under this framework, so it would be interesting if we can get uh, constant on protocols using only standard assumptions, even in this model. Um, of course, it's also very interesting, you know, it would be interesting to explore other notions of concurrent security, 
Because if you really think about it, the existing definitions of uh, concurrent security do not really seem to precisely capture what information must be lost in the concurrent setting. And so, you know, at least I think that perhaps the right definition of concurrent security is still out there to be discovered. So with that, I'll conclude. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.